Everybody. Hello. Welcome to Tuesday Talk. I'm Pastor Rick here with Pastor Jack. Hello. And uh, Jack has a special word for you yes. from uh, <coughs> from Jonah. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just say hello real quick here. Hey, David, good to see you. Tony, God bless you. Alinda, God bless you. 
Hope things are doing okay for you. Uh, Betty Perez, God bless you, Betty. I think is this your first time on a Tuesday talk? We're well, good to have you. Eva Rogers, God bless you. It's always so good to have you on here. Uh, Gigi's on here. Pamela Quinn Amendola. Gil Zanke's here from Tennessee. No sound? Uh oh. Oh, wait. She has sound. I can hear sound loud and clear. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Gail, can you hear it? Oh, there it is. Okay. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, good to have you on here today. And uh, good to have you here, Jack. I, uh, I had the privilege of watching Jack in his swim class this morning. And uh, you're doing a great job swimming. Backstroke, breaststroke, mm -hmm. regular stroke, diving. What else? Breaststroke, backstroke, butterfly. Butterfly. Freestroke. I mean, freestyle. Dive. Thing. That's great. You're doing a great job. Okay, so anyway, uh, why don't I open up in prayer and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Okay? If you have any uh, questions or prayer requests, you could put them down here and we'll get to them as soon as we can. But let's pray together right now. Dear Father, Lord God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity to share the word of God. May the word really touch our hearts in a special way. Anoint Jack as he brings forth the word and let us all be tuned in to what the Holy Spirit is saying today. So we love you. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Betty. Hey, Lorinda, God bless you. Lorinda. Hope you're feeling okay. So... What do you have, Jack? So today we're going to be talking about Jonah. Jonah? Mm -hmm, from the book of Jonah. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. We're going to read it. The whole thing? Yep. It's only three pages in my book. <sighs> but, um, yeah. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to give a lesson. What can we learn about it? So, this... Hey, Danica. God bless you. Let's see where we are. You have a little intro, Jack, or you just want to get right into it? Um, so... Jonah wrote this book, and he's the main character. Well, God is always the main character, but we hear Jonah. Okay, so Jonah... It's like considered a minor, one of the minor prophets. Mm -hmm. It's at, if you're in, if you if you take the middle of your Bible, and then and then go to your, go further to your right, <clears throat> you'll find Jonah between, say Psalms and Proverbs and all those big books. Obadiah. And and, and, and and between that and Matthew, Hi. you'll find Jonah. Okay. Well, anyway, I think this is a lot of reading, Jack. But go ahead. Go, as you so, feel so led. A message from the Lord came to Jonah, the <clears throat> son of Amittai. The Lord said, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. The sins of its people have come to my attention. So Nineveh was a bad um, city, and everybody was bad, and they did bad things. So no one, no, one, no one knew God in Nineveh. Yeah. And the Lord tells mm -hmm. Jonah to go there. Mm-hmm. Okay. But Jonah ran away from the Lord, and he headed for Tarshish, which is the opposite way. And so he went down to the port of Joppa. There he found a ship that was going to Tarshish, and he paid the fare and went on board. Then he sailed for Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. Now why? why okay, well, we'll get into that. Okay. <clears throat> but the Lord sent a strong wind over the Mediter Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. A wild storm came up. A wild storm came up. It was so wild that the ship was in danger of breaking apart. All the sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his own god for help. They threw the ship's contents into the sea. They were trying to make the ship lighter. But Jonah had gone below deck. And can you guess what he did? He probably... Well, go ahead. There he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. So while there was this giant storm and everybody's running around crazy, he, he went to, to bed. He yeah. goes to sleep. He went to bed. Wasn't he worried a little bit? Uh, maybe. 
The captain went down to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call out to your God for help. Maybe he'll pay attention to what, what's happening to us, and then we won't die. Here's what the sailors said to one another. So he said, Pray to your God. Mm-hmm. So he knew Nobody Jonah. Nobody else was God. Was right. So, he, so the guys knew that, yeah. that Jonah was a godly man, supposedly. So they said, Someone is to blame for getting us into all this trouble. Come, let's cast lots to find out who it is. What's casting lots? Well, it's like drawing straws. It's, it's like a game of chance. It's like if I had these, these are scripture cards. Mm-hmm. If I say, okay, Jack, pick out, pick out <laughs> the one from the book of Psalms. Is it? Yeah. It is? But you win. But see, you, you, it could have been one of these. But it's just it's by chance. So they, they, they so cast... So how does that prove who it is? Well, because people think a divine ordinance, God will direct you to pick out the one that he wants you to get. Well, I guess it worked. It, yeah, well, let's see what happens. So, um, so they did, and Jonah was picked. They asked him, what terrible thing have you done to bring all this trouble on us? Ah. Tell us, what do you do for a living? Where do you come from? What is your country? What people do you belong to? He answered, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord. He is the God of heaven. He made the sea and the dry land. They found that he was running away from the Lord. That's because he had told them. Then they became terrified. So they asked him, how could you do a thing like that? The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied. Then it will become calm. Right. So, so Jonah realized maybe it's his fault that the ship's having all this trouble on the sea because mm-hmm. he's running away from God. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so the idea is when we don't do what God wants us to do, it's possible that calamity will follow us. So he's, it, it's, in order to save everyone on the boat, he said, well, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Mm-hmm. Well, that was pretty brave of him. But um, then it will become calm. I know it's my fault that this terrible storm has come on you. But the men didn't do what he said. Instead, they did their best to row back to land, but they couldn't. The sea got even rougher than before. Then they cried out to the Lord. They prayed, please, Lord, don't let us die for taking this man's life. After all, he might not be guilty of doing anything wrong. So don't hold us responsible for killing him, Lord. You always do what you want to do. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the stormy sea became calm. The men saw that what had happened. Then they began to have great respect for the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to him, and they made promises to him. So Jonah died? They threw him overboard, and Jonah died, and everything was okay. (laughs) Right? That's the end of the first chapter. But wait, there's another chapter. Okay, that's not the end of the story. Now, but it could have been. But God had a different plan. Now, the Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah. Oh. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Wow. That's symbolic. It reminds me of uh, when Jesus died and then he was in the tomb yes, for three days and the rose. Jesus even mentions that in one of the Gospels. Yeah. And... From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, When I was in trouble, I called out to the Lord, and he answered me. When I was deep in the place of the dead, I called out for help. And you listened to my cry. You threw me deep into the Mediterranean Sea. I was deep down in its waters. They were all around me. All your rolling waves were sweeping over me. I said, I have been driven away from you, but I will look again towards your holy temple in Jerusalem. I had almost drowned in the waves. The deep waters were all around me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I sank down to the bottom of the mountains. I thought I had died and gone down into the grave forever. But you are the Lord my God. You brought my life up from the very edge of the pit of death. When my life was nearly over, I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose up to you. It reached you in your holy temple in heaven. Wait a minute. Jonah's in the fish? Mm -hmm. And he's praying. You know, I have heard stories about that that really happens sometimes. There's some fish out in the ocean that are so humongous 
that a person could actually get swallowed up and get in there, be in there, and live for a little while. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't necessarily a whale. Right. It says, Mike says a big fish. Mm -hmm. So right. he might have, like, God might have made a fish specifically to swallow Jonah. Well, that's true, too. <clears throat> Some people worship their worthless statues of their gods. They turn away from God's love for them. But I will sacrifice a thank offering to you, and I will shout with thankful praise. I will do what I have promised. I will say, Lord, you are the one who saves. The wow. Lord gave the fish a, com a command, and... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. So Jonah's so in there, he's right? Praying. He's Now he <laughs> must be praying his heart out, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's in a terrible situation. He's in the belly of the fish. And then right when he says, Lord, you are the one who saves. And then the Lord says. All right, go ahead. He said, he gave the fish a command and it spit Jonah up onto dry land. So even the fish obeyed the Lord. Yeah. Okay. That's chapter two? Yeah. So for a second time, a message from the Lord came to Jonah. Oh. The Lord said, go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce to its people the message I give you. So the Lord gave him a second chance. Mm -hmm. What did he do this time? Jonah obeyed the Lord. I would think so. He went to Nineveh. It was a very large city. In fact, it took about three days to go through it. Wow. Jonah began by going one whole day into the city. As he went, he announced, In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Hmm. The people of Nineveh believed God's warning, so they decided not to eat any food for a while, and all of them put on the rough clothing people wear when they're sat. Wait, wait, wait. So, so the, Jonah started to tell the people of Nineveh, in 40 days you're going to be destroyed? Uh-huh. And they listened. Did they have a way out? No. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, maybe. And all of them put on the rough clothing people wear when they're sat. That's what everyone did, from the least important then to the most important. Okay. And finally, Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh. He got up from his throne, he tore off his royal robes, and he also dressed himself in the clothing of sadness. Yeah. And then he sat down in the dust. Here's the message he sent out to the people of Nineveh. So this is the king speaking. I and my nobles give this order. Don't let the people or an animals taste anything. That includes your herds and your flocks. People and animals must not eat or drink anything. Let people and animals alike be covered with the clothing of sadness. All of you must call out to God with all your hearts. Stop doing what is evil. Don't harm others. Who knows? God might take pity on us. Hmm. He might be not he might not be angry with us anymore. Then we won't die. So <clears throat> So they, they cried out so the people of Nineveh cried out to God. Mm -hmm. And even the animals wore the rough sadness clothing. Yeah, and you, they fasted too. You even know, the animals. You know what the sad clothing is called? Uh, no. Sackcloth. Sad cloth? Sack. Sack? Sack. Because it's like a sack? Like a sack, yeah. A sack of potatoes. <laughs> so it was like rough clothes. And they would put that on when they would get serious about repenting. <laughs> so... All right, so, so even the fish obey God and the animals obey God. Well, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. So God saw what the people of Nineveh did. He saw that they stopped doing what they he what was evil, and Jonah's Jonah um, proclaimed it to all the people. And God's plan worked. Oh, well, what did verse always. number ten say? Three ten. Um, he saw that they stopped doing what was evil, so he took pity on them. The he didn't destroy them as he said he would. The Lord? Mm-hmm. So there's a point that sometimes the Lord might change his plan. His plan when people cry out in sincerity. Yeah, like um, I forget what James 15 something. It says the prayers of a righteous man avail much. So when all the people cried out to him, he changed his plans and right. he wouldn't destroy them. Good point. All right, so chapter 4 begins. <clears throat> but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. What? He thought that since the people of Nineveh 
were so bad and evil and sinful that they should be destroyed, and he didn't agree with God. I thought he was a man of God. Yes. And before, he thought he knew what was doing, what he was doing, and what was best, and he didn't listen to God. And now he's doing it again. Wow. So, and he so, thinks that his way of thinking is better than the Lord's. So mine, what is, mine says, it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. Mm -hmm. He got angry because God was forgiving the people of Nineveh because they repented. Mm -hmm. He wanted God to wipe them out. Well, actually, there was a problem between Israel and Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were not good people. And they did terrible things to the people of Israel. So Jonah's thinking, I, I don't want to. I don't want to see them get better. I want to. I want God to wipe them out. But should God have wiped out Jonah when Jonah disobeyed God? No. Well, I don't think Jonah would have thought so. No. So if you receive grace, you have to give grace. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So he prayed to the Lord, and here's what Jonah said to him. Lord, isn't this exactly what I thought would happen when I was still at home? This, that is why I tried to prevent by running away to Tarshish. I knew that you are gracious. You are tender and kind. You are slow to get angry. You are full of love. You are a God who takes pity on people. You don't want to destroy them. Lord, take away my life. I'd rather die than live. So now, Jonah wants to die. Yes. Yeah, now we're Okay. Back. Okay, here, well, we're back on. What do you know about that? Yeah, that was a... <clears throat> yeah, it did the same thing as last time, and it just blooped off. So, blooped off. is everyone back on? I think they are. Wait, Let's see. Six people, yes. Very okay. good. I think it says resume, so all the people are back. Okay, could someone just say we're okay now? Ah, uh, yes. We're back. Thank okay. you, Tony. So, let's go where we left off. Where were we? Jonah is mad at the Lord. Because oh. all the people um, of Nineveh are not being punished because they repented. All right. And then the Lord said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry? No. No, it's not right for Jonah to be angry. Right. And Jonah had left the city. He had sat down at a place east of it. There, he put some branches over his head. He sat in their shade. He wanted to see what would happen to the city. So he was, like, persistent. He still wanted to see it annihilated with giant meteors, flaming balls, so, so he fire just, <laughs> flying, and annihilating the city. <laughs> all right, all right. So he just goes somewhere and sits under a shade tree? Yep. To watch the show? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then the Lord God sent a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah. Oh, so it the gave, Lord's showing him a thing hmm. or two. It gave him more shade for his head. It made him more comfortable. Jonah was very happy he had the leafy plant. Huh. But before sunrise the next day, then the next day God sent a worm. And the this worm is getting a little complicated up here. The plant the Lord, dried up. So this is a story about the Lord being the Lord of people and the Lord of animals. Because mm -hmm. he controlled the fish and now he's controlling a worm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he's doing all of this so he could get to Jonah's heart. And Jonah's heart, obviously, was not in a good place. So the worm tune up all the plant and dries out. And... Wait, the worm came. Uh-huh. It ate the giant leafy plant. It did? Yeah. And then the leafy plant dried out and got destroyed. Right. And then the And then when the sun rose, God sent a... Burning east wind right at Jonah. So, and all right, so now the, the Lord is the Lord of people, the Lord of mm -hmm. animals and worms, and now and fish, and now the Lord of the elements of the air. Yes. Very powerful. And the sun beat down on Jonah's head and made him very weak. Ah. And then he wanted to die again. Oh, <laughs> poor he Jonah. He says, I'd rather die than live. But God spoke to Jonah. God said, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah said, It is. In fact, I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. Aye, aye, aye. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, but you didn't take care of it. Ah. You did not make it grow. And it grew up one night and died the next. And shouldn't I show concern for the great city of Nineveh as more than 120,000 people? 
They can't tell right from wrong, and Nineveh also has a lot of animals. So, just as <coughs> Jonah was concerned for the plant, but he didn't take care of it, so it died. Then, and he's saying, so should I treat the people the same way that you treat the plant? Yeah. And you know what? The, the, the book of Jonah ends with a question mark. When mine, it says, okay, sh uh, should I not pity Nineveh, the great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock? Mm -hmm. So should I not have pity on Nineveh? That's the question. And it ends right there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did God have pity on Nineveh? Yes. He did. Mm -hmm. And he saved 100, let's see, 120,000 persons. 120. 120,000. You know how many people live in Haverhill? Half that number. 60,000. So if you think of Haverhill, right? You know, think of all up there, up in that way, the restaurants in downtown, all the people everywhere. 60,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now double it. And that's how many people lived in Nineveh. And all of them turned to the Lord to repent. All of them? Well, uh, we, yeah, we think so. And Jonah was upset over that, but the Lord heard their prayer and forgave them of mm -hmm. their sin. Now, we don't know whatever happened to Jonah. But Jonah paints a picture of humanity mm -hmm. that's so stubborn sometimes, mm -hmm. that wants to receive grace but not give grace. Mm -hmm. And that wants to basically run away from God when things get too hard to carry out. Mm -hmm. So God gives us another chance even when we sin. We might not do things as bad as the people in Nineveh, right. but in God's eyes, every sin is the same. Well, yeah, okay, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So the Ninevites, were, they were like heathens. What is a heathen? You know, they would kill people easily. They didn't have any manners. Mm. They would yell and scream and hurt people, kill babies and stuff like that. All right, so that's one thing. But the other thing is, God also was, was trying to reach Jonah's heart to forgive him too. Mm -hmm. And Jonah was a good person. Yeah. He was a good person with a, with, a, with a heart that had bad pieces in that heart. Mm -hmm. So how would you kind of say that, Jack? How would you kind of... So there's two, I think there's two types of people that God wants to forgive. Mm -hmm. The... People who try to be good but sin. Right. And then the bad people who sin. The people that don't know any better. Yeah. And our yeah. community has both types of people. Yeah. Because some people, their families have just been brought up doing bad things, so they learn from their Right, they don't know parents, any better. So they don't know what's good and what's bad. Right, exactly. And like how... So like how we think that like being Christian, like we know that the Lord is good and he forgives us, but that's what people think about their religions and what they think is good right. and what is normal and what is like right. their religion, but it's not actually the good. So, so the way we present the gospel to people is really important. Mm -hmm. Like we can't tell someone the gospel and then start to hit him over the head with the Bible and say, you have to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think that would work. Mm -hmm. Heathen, a person who does not belong to a widely held religion. Thank you, Gigi. And uh, one other thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't it important to like, you know, when you hear, when you sense God tell you to do something, mm -hmm. that you do it? Because if Jonah was obedient in the first place, mm -hmm. none of this other stuff would have happened. Mm -hmm. But he was fighting the will of God. He thought his way was better, but it wasn't. Well, you know what Jesus said before he ascended into heaven. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. What, whether it's Nineveh, or whether it's Haverhill, or whether there it's... There was no Haverhill. Well, I'm just saying. But he is saying it, like continuing it for us. Yeah, like, you know, no matter where you, where the Lord, you know, tells you to go, everyone, everyone, it's like, like your mommy said when she preached, 
we're all unworthy, but we're not worthless. Mm -hmm. We all have worth. We're unworthy, but we have worth. And the Lord wants to come to redeem everybody. So I would take it like this. Like in, in a city like Haverhill, for instance, we have, we have good sinners and we have bad sinners. Mm -hmm. And we have good sinners that may go to church. They may obey the law for the most part and they have nice homes and families and drive nice cars. But that's not... But they're still sinners. Yeah. So they need salvation. Mm -hmm. And then you have other sinners that are homeless, that are drug addicts, that are bad people, that are thieves, Who that are in prison. Anybody. Well, they may, they may well, or may they not. May, but but they, they, need, they need salvation. And mm -hmm. we need to be able to present Jesus to both groups of people. So if someone can, like Jonah, like a church guy, who, you know, he tries to follow after God, you know, he goes to church, you know, he's like us. But everybody's right. gonna sin, you know. It's a now, how, how does this begin he, again? He, well, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. That's yeah. all we know. So we we have the word of the Lord. It's called the Bible. Yes. And so the Bible tells us very clearly, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. So Christmas is coming. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to share our faith with people. It's a great time to, uh, you know, to, to let people know that Jesus is real and Jesus came to save them. Mm -hmm. Like when we went to Dunkin' Donuts, we said, Merry Christmas. And someone in the back seat said, you should have said, Jesus loves you. And maybe we should have, but we planted a seed, and it's always good to say Merry Christmas. It's kind of like, although some people may get upset if we say Merry Christmas. Why? No, they don't want to think about it. They don't believe in it. So we want to encourage everyone on here today to uh, seize the moment that we're in, in this Christmas season, to think of yourselves like Jonah, that's been commissioned by God to take the message of Christ to the world around us. As I said on Sunday, it could be at Market Basket or Target, Dunkin' Donuts, in your at, in your family at, at your family table where you when you Walking have dinner. Walking on the sidewalk. Anywhere it could be people you know, your neighbors, you know, or people you don't know. Mm -hmm. But be be ready to give a little bit of attention to the Lord in a public setting. Mm -hmm. That's what this was all about: going public with your faith. Yes. Well, that's pretty good, Jack. We got through the whole book of Jonah. Yeah. I'm surprised we did it, but we did it. But it is 1231, so we better wrap it up. Pop, pop, pop. Yes. Pop, pop. You want to pray, Jack? Uh, okay. All right, everyone. Well, everybody remember that everybody needs compassion. Mm. And you have to spread the gospel. And... Just had something in my brain. I forget. Maybe <laughs> I'll think of it. Right. Okay, let's pray. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given us. You're yes. so great and mighty and caring and forgiving, Lord. So I pray that... Um, we will be thankful and that you will forgive us of all that we've done, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray that you will um, use us and that we will you will reach all those people who don't know better or if they do, who are sinning um, purposely and who just don't know you, Lord. Um, let us reach them and tell them all about you and let them come to church and praise you, Lord, and believe in you <clears throat> um, and repent. So, Lord, uh, I pray comfort and protection over all these people yes, today. Yes, I pray Lord. protection for our families and our relatives. So, Lord, I pray that you will comfort us today and guide us with all that we're doing. Let us have a great day and um, <clears throat> um, a great year. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Bless all these people on. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jack, for a good word today. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. We're going to put some music for a minute. Yes. 
<clears throat> okay. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, hope to see you on next Tuesday talk. Hope to see you in heaven. Bye-bye.